All right, so welcome to the Orlando Baptist Church <laughs> podcast, and we have special missionary guest, yes. Gerardo and Cecia Gaona. Go. Thank you. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> G. And Cecia. Yes, so, yes. Um, and so you guys are here for our missions week this mm-hmm. year, yes. 2023, mm-hmm. and we just thought we would uh, sit down and have a conversation. So tell us a little bit about... Um, your kind of ministry background and calling. Mm-hmm. You guys are going to Spain as missionaries, yes. but you've been church planters yeah. in Mexico. So yes. tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, um, you want to start? You want me to share my story Ooh, yeah, first? Yeah, sure. Okay. So for me, everything started when I was a child. Of course, my parents used to take me to a Christian church, and that's when I accepted Jesus as my mm-hmm. Savior. But then uh, when I became a teenager... I started to look for a place to belong. Yeah. You know, it's very common. You start like hitting the 11, 12, and I started looking in the wrong places. Yeah. The popular people, the people that get in trouble and try to fit here and there, didn't happen. So one day on my searching for that place, somebody invited me to a youth group meeting. And I was like, well, whatever, it's a church, so I will yeah. go. And that's when I was in shock, mm-hmm. seeing a lot of people uh, reading the Bible, singing, playing games to literally, where do you find a verse in the Bible? Yeah. I mean, that was like, <laughs> this is so cool. And then I felt so welcome. Uh, whenever it was time to to hear the sermon, people was paying attention. They were so loving. And that's when finally click on me. Okay, I can belong here. Actually, I think I belong here. Yeah. And that's a um, Baptist church. And that's where I started my relationship and my growing with Jesus. Yeah. It was like I went through discipleship um, and it was under that ministry that I was invited to a youth camp. Mm-hmm. And that's when um, I surrendered my life to Jesus. But yeah. the way I surrendered my life, it wasn't like I want to be a missionary or I want to be a um, pastor's wife. I, I just say, God, I want you to use me whenever you want, whatever you want to do, whatever. Like, yeah. I'll do it. So I am 16 by then, come back home, continue my education, my regular life. And at the same time, I was being prepared in my local church to, to minister, like mm-hmm. to do anything. Uh, I was very involved in whatever was possible, if it was uh, music or uh, discipling other yeah. people or call it whatever. Um, at the same time, I was doing my regular life. I went to college and everything. And then... So my life looks like okay, yeah. normal, doing everything. And 2005, I'm already graduated. Um, we're serving full time in our church, pretty much. We're full time work, full time church. Yeah. How do we do it? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> uh, but then that's when when we saw the need of starting yeah. another church. Yeah. So back then we're engaged. So that's a big thing. And. Uh, and we're presented with the need. We, we need to keep planting churches. Like, yeah, you're in moderate, but, but people really need to hear the good news of Jesus. Yeah. And and this same country, like, we need to keep planting churches. And and my, my fiancé back then, he's like, of course, we're in. Let's go. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, I don't know. I mean, yes, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I want you to picture my, my life at that point. My life at that point, I will consider it was pretty much perfect. So I've dated this guy for five years. Five years. I'm finally about to marry him. So that's yeah. pretty perfect. Um, I graduated from the best private school in Mexico. I got the best job I could ever ask for. I have my family. We are super faithful in our church. We're growing. I support missions. I'm pretty sure better than everybody else, you know, <laughs> you think that way. Like, why do you want me to leave this, Lord, Yeah. right now? Like right now, this is like everything. My life is just about to just everything I ever dreamed, I have it. Yeah. So now you want me to leave it? And I was like, oh, if I tell him, he's going to say, then I won't marry you. Mm-hmm. And I'm like five years of dating. I made him mad and I said, <laughs> I'm just going to keep it. Yeah. I'm going to keep it to myself. And another thing that I had in my my heart that it was heavy. I mean, one thing is like, I, can, I cannot tell him I don't want to because he won't marry me. 
Then on the other side, I was like, if I ever go, I'm going to be the biggest disappointment to my dad. Mm. My dad has done everything for me. Paying for that school, he's like super proud of who I am and everything that we have accomplished. And I don't want to be my dad's disappointment. Yeah. I just don't want to. So I have those things in my mind. I just ignore them, continue, plan the wedding, get married. And after that, that's when I talked to him and I was like, gee, I don't think I want to do this. First thing he said, you should have told me before, really we would have canceled the wedding. And I was like, well, that's why I didn't do that. <laughs> uh, I knew it, it was five years risking. Yes. Yeah. No, thank you. And, um, but that's it. And then at the same, when we get married, I talked to my dad as well. And I said that, I think we're gonna go as missionaries. And he said, no words. No words, no good, no bad, just simply no words. And um, I took it like a bad sign, yeah. honestly. Um, so what happened after that? Now in the, I'm in the worst spot right now. What happened? God kept working my heart. Mm -hmm. God didn't leave me. He was continuing working in my heart, even though I was doing everything I was supposed to and my face was like I was okay with everything in my heart. God was, God was working and... Um, we love music. Yeah. One of the things that we used to do back then is special songs. I don't know. Remember that? Yeah, yeah that was the thing. Songs. Every Sunday, you know, yeah. special songs. So um, he came one day to me and say, hey, we are scheduled to sing a special song next Sunday. And I said, sure, give me the special song. And when I start hearing this, the lyrics and the, the music, it, this, the, the lyrics are like, Lord, you don't have to send anybody else. Send me, I'm the one. And I'm like, this guy is trying to trick me here. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm so sorry, but this is probably the first time ever I'm not singing with you. I'm not singing with you that Sunday. And that Sunday he stand, he sang by himself, and God was speaking to me. Mm -hmm. You might think, how? He can speak through the Bible, through songs, through people, through many, many different ways. Well, God speak, spoke to me that day through questions. Question number one, was why you don't want to go why so i know the answer well and i can be honest with god well it's my family my house my life my job my my and then another question interrupt that and the other question was who gave you all that hmm. i mean it was it was literally god working in my life yeah and that's when i said okay i get it i mean there's no way for me to go anywhere else. God gave me everything that I'm holding on to. And he's the one asking me to leave it because he has better plans for me. And, and that day I re-surrendered my life to Jesus. Um, we prayed together. And that same Sunday night, I stand with him and we sang together. God sent me. I am the one. Mm. Don't keep looking for anybody else. Yeah. Send me. And uh, that's my calling yeah. story and yeah. journey <laughs> and um i'll tell you one thing about my dad when i talked to him he said nothing and and it was hard on my heart it was heavy on my heart and it took me from that day around 12 years probably we were in a mission trip jamaica we went visit uh, nursing homes when we were there, I was like, huh, my dad used to take me when I was a little child. Like suddenly those memories came to yeah. my mind. And I just called my dad. I said, Daddy, I just want to say thank you because you implanted this in my heart. And mm. you, I mean, you taught me how to be good to others, how to help the people in need. And I just want to say thank you. And, and his words, um, Dustin, he was like, says, yeah, I am very proud of who you are. Mm you and your husband and your kids and what you do for the Lord. I'm so proud of you guys. Mm. You got, uh, every time I can, I just brag about you guys. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. I have no idea. Yeah. Those words meant to me the whole world. Yeah. It took me 12 years to hear those words from yeah. my dad. And all that, all that to say that helps me kind of Think a little bit of how it's going to be being with God. Yeah. Saying, well done. Yeah. <laughs> we have yeah. to wear our whole life, of course. Yeah. But like, 
it is totally worth yeah. it. It is, it is totally worth it just to keep pushing and pushing. For me, it's been a journey of you're comfortable. Let me take it away. Come here. Yeah. You're comfortable. Like we were, we were comfortable in San Luis. Um, we build our life there. Yeah. We plant a couple of churches. Again, our life looks pretty perfect yeah. and settled. Well, that's it. Yeah. It's time to leave this and take the next yeah. step. Now we're in Oklahoma. We're in the States. Like, if there's a place to be comfortable, it's this country. Yeah. Seriously, we yeah. love comfort. People do anything for you to be yeah. comfortable. And, but we're still willing to say, yeah. yes, Lord take this and now we are on our way to Spain yeah. and we're excited and yeah, I awesome. think. <laughs> well, I, I think um, the what you said about your dad's um, encouragement, I think that we all long to hear that from our parents, but especially our dads. I yeah. mean, there, there's something about that, which is which is why, you know, uh, our, our fathers are, are, are not, um, are never perfect, but right. uh, the, God is our perfect heavenly father. And, yeah. and the idea of understanding the father's blessing yeah. is so important. But it also reminds me that as, as brothers and sisters in Christ, the importance of encouraging each other. Yes. absolutely. Um, you know, every time you read any of Paul's letters, he's always calling out people by name. I'm so grateful for Timothy. I'm so grateful for Epaphroditus. I'm so grateful for Lydia. I'm so grateful for Phoebe. Mm -hmm. He he doesn't just say you guys are great. He calls people out by name and blesses them yeah. and encourages them. And so, um, yeah, it, as as Christians, just to, when you see something it, in somebody that God is using them, then just tell them I'm yeah. proud yeah. of you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, yeah. And we don't we shouldn't. God has designed us to want that blessing. Right. Yeah. Um, so we can do that for each other. So G from so. Uh, you guys are kind of young professionals, newly married, and, yeah. and you go to plant a church. So yes. kind of what was that? <laughs> yeah. Like? So, um, yeah, when I, I, just to recap real quick my, my story, it's, I heard the gospel as, as a kid, right? As a, as a young guy, um, teenager is when, when I, I heard God's voice in my life, right? To say, like, hey, surrender. Yeah. Surrender, like, means just give me all of you, right? Mm -hmm. So I was I was 18, I think. And I was already thinking, okay, I, I need to, I think I want to go to law school. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to go to law school. And when I became a lawyer and, and but it, it resonated in my, in my, in my heart, in my mind. But I want to be whatever God wants me to be, mm -hmm. and I didn't know exactly what. It just if you kind of try to figure out, maybe a pastor, yeah. maybe you know yeah. something, and uh, so I surrendered that. So I went to law school in uh, 2005. I was already working, but as she said, we were trained by our local church, and we were involved in everything yeah. you can imagine, yeah. you know. But, uh, but 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 yeah. but the kids ministry. <laughs> that's funny to say. I never worked with kids ministry. Um, so yeah, yeah, and a lot of uh, the theology learning, you know, preaching and studying the Bible and uh, teaching and all of that, and then became a, a youth pastor. Well, more more a college mm -hmm. pastor. Mm -hmm. And uh, so yeah, it was. Two years into working, she was working as well. Uh, we were engaged in 2005. And our pastor came and he said, hey, um, so the vision is to continue planting churches. And we were thinking of you guys. And he's like, how about that? What about your decision? You know, you made a decision long ago, like maybe to get into ministry yeah. or something. And it's gonna get scary, you know? yeah. It's scary, like okay, I'm, I'm, I'm. I think I figured it out my life, you know. You're in the path, mm -hmm. um, and but in my heart is like, yeah. I, I said, Lord, you, you can have me, right? You can whatever you want to do with my life. So I say yes, you know. Like inside of me, I was really scared, yeah. But I say yes, 
And that's when in her mind, she's like, I don't want to go. Yeah. Um, but I said yes. And not knowing exactly what that meant. So that was 2005 and 2006. We got married early in the year, January. And by September 15, uh, well, we, we quit. I quit my, my job and she did as well. She was working for Pepsi company and I was working back then for um, the city, for the government. And and uh, so what do you do? We put together a team. Well, I, I didn't put it together. They put it together, my, my pastors and all like that. And they said, okay, so you're going to, we did the survey. I did the survey and all that. So for, for the city, you're going to go to San Luis Potosí, which is six hours down Monterey. Okay. Um, and so, okay, you have the team together and you're going to plant the church. Okay. Right. So put everything in, in, in the car and uh, the trailer and move. And so now what do you do? <laughs> really, what do you do? And uh, and you're the pastor, but there's no people, right? Yeah. This is so it's funny. So literally we got there. And the only thing I dream of, it was, Lord, give us a house where the living room has no pillars. Mm -hmm. So my I picture this. I picture the living room full of chairs, you know. And uh, I said, I want to buy a piano. She plays piano, play guitar. So I want to buy a piano, got my guitar. I'm just going to put a TV. Remember the, the big square TV, yeah, yeah. the, the boxes. <laughs> right. And uh, that's how we're going to do it. So I need a house with no pillars in the middle. So yeah. it can be like a mini auditorium, you know? Yep. It was and dining room and living room. Together. Dining room and living room together. That's what we were that's looking right. for. That's right. We were looking for that. Now I have to say something. Um, previous or uh, moving to uh, San Luis, we did some work. Um, while we were working in Monterey and very involved at church as well, we would go every Saturday, wake up really early, like at 5 a.m., something like that. 5 a.m. probably we were traveling already uh, down to San Luis Potosí mm -hmm. to meet people. Literally, in the plazas, in the streets, neighborhoods. I remember printing a flyer with what is going to be mm. to have a church here in San Luis. So we will talk to random people. We will go, we will get there to, to eat breakfast or brunch yeah. and try to talk to people and say, hey, so we're from Monterey. And, Oh, really? Yeah. Actually, I want to open a church here. Here's a flyer yeah. if you're interested. And conversations mm -hmm. like that. And then if people will give us their information, then we had a data, yeah. you know, yeah. with all the information. So that was my plan. And we did that for probably six mm -hmm. months, mm -hmm. something like that. So um, wake up 6 a.m., get there like at 10, 11, something like that all day long trying to make contacts and then come back to Monterey like at 11 p.m. <laughs> midnight and then, you know, go to church Sunday all day long and then go to work on Monday. So we did that for a while. Wow. And, uh, and that, was, that was the only thing, you know? So when we got there, we said, okay, God gave us a house. It was so awesome because after a while of looking and we were not finding the house, and uh, there's this lady, um, I always struggle with this word, re retailer, realtor, Re realtor, realtor. Yeah. realtor. Yeah. yeah. So she was like, hey, I have one more house. You want to see it? And we were like, oh, so disappointed. And we need to go back to Monterey. I mean, we're doing this while we go and do these right. visits, trying to find a house as well. And we we're like, OK, let's go see this last house, you know. And there's this lady showing the house to someone else. And I'm like, I'm going to hurry. I mean, yeah. just. And I interrupt her and I say, can I just see the, your living room? Yeah. <laughs> and then she's like, sure, come in. So when I got in, I was like, perfect. Yeah. No pillars, dining and living room together. And living so, like, like a deliver, like um, a little level. Oh, yeah. It was so so it was like an yeah. yeah. auditorium. Uh, yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> you know, elevated, you know. 
And um, I got out and I told her, we need to wait. We need to wait for these people to get down and see in the house. I said, this is the house. Mm -hmm. This is the house. And it was so awesome because uh, as soon as the other people left, I talked to the lady. I said, hey, how much? <laughs> Just like, yeah. really? Yeah. yeah. And uh, so it was funny. That's how we started. Wow. That's how we started. And then, uh, well, God bless it. Hmm. Uh, we will get out when we, we moved. Get out every day. I mean, what's your schedule? You have no schedule, really. Yeah. Just there. We convert that house into the church. We live there. Yeah. We have one room for us, literally. I mean, it is just different. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, seriously, we were limited with finances and all that stuff. So you have to think out of the box, yeah. right? That's what you need to do. And uh, one room was practically ours and the rest of the house. I set up an office. I um, set up a like nursery room mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the like kids, like elementary yeah. in the backyard. Yeah. There was a room, like a service room. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that became that. And the kitchen, it was pretty much everyone's kitchen yeah. and, and they will come and serve themselves. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but as I said, God bless it. Awesome. And uh, soon enough, people started to come because we were out there just delivering flyers yeah. and trying to make contacts and things like yeah. that. And, and yeah, and that grew in about a year. And we needed to get out from that place and rented a bigger place and supporting missionaries year two. Yeah, wow. yeah immediately. And uh, yeah, I mean, but because we believe in missions so much and we said, Lord, if you want to use us like out of this country to another country, we're willing. Yeah. We will get passionate about it. I mean, we started supporting missionaries yeah. immediately. And uh, we said, Lord, whatever, whatever you want. So in our ministry, we had the opportunity to go places and, and see um, Argentina, for example. And we were there with a friend from our church in Mexico. He yeah. was an Argentinian. And, and when he moved back to Argentina, we went and visited and we did ministry a little bit over there, experience ministry. Um, it was incredible. And then we visited Brazil as well. So we were just praying, Lord. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't like a survey in, in, indeed, yeah. but we our hearts and minds right. okay. were open yeah. to yeah. that. So we will see the city with that eyes, you know, maybe here, yeah. you know. And then South Africa, yeah. you know. Um, Durban, mm -hmm. we, yeah. we we visited many places yeah. in South Africa, and it was just the two of us, mm -hmm. like saying, "Lord, yeah. whatever you want, right?" And we were this close yeah. to say it is South Africa because mm -hmm. our hearts were like, "Man, there's a lot yeah. of need." And um, but while this happened, uh, good, a good friend of ours here in the states, they were following our ministry. And they knew of our desire to become missionaries, maybe. Um, and one day we were visiting our friends here in Oklahoma. And they said, our, which is our pastor today. He's like, hey, Jean says, yeah, what's going on with you guys? Are, are you ever going to be missionaries? Mm -hmm. Like getting out of Mexico and go yeah. somewhere else. And our hearts were like, oh, I mean. Yes, we thought about that, but we're doing great in, in Mexico, yeah. you know. Um, by this time, we're, we had a second church mm -hmm. following the same pattern yeah. that we followed the first time. But now you have a church to support right. this new mission, yeah. you know. So we were, I mean, we're, we're doing great. Yeah. And But when, when you say that, it's like, I don't know. I mean, yeah. that was in my heart, but it's not happening. I don't see it happening unless God opens doors for that, yeah. right? And our, our friend in, here in the U.S., he said, Pastor, he's like, we've been praying for you guys for years. And here's what I would like to talk to you and say, we, we, we would love to be your sending church. If you guys come to the U.S., partner with us for a few years. You learn all their ways to do ministry. Um, 
make some contacts, you know, build a foundation here. We would love to be your sending church, launch you yeah. to another part of the world. And for us, we were like, oh my goodness. I mean, it was just incredible. Yeah. But then you you get into, oh, seriously, we have all these yeah. and then I have to leave that and start over. And, but we felt that that was, that was a prayer that we were like an answer, yeah. you know, of our prayer. And so we, we say yes, we said yes. And we, you know, put ourselves in a new journey. Well, God put us in a yeah. new journey in our lives. And so we handed the churches in Mexico to another pastor. And yeah, we started the process, the transition to come here to the U.S. It got very tricky because we didn't know how. Yeah. The, the, we said, okay, how, right? How are we going to be here and, and, and be missions interns here and then go somewhere else? So we said, okay, well, uh, a worker's religious visa or religious workers visa. Mm -hmm. And we started the tramit on that. And I mean, it took four years. Wow. I mean, I'm making just the story long, the long story short. It, it took four years and a lot happened in those four years, yeah. you know, like a lot of, did I make the right decision? Right, yeah. You know, it was, was it, was it the right decision to leave Mexico and come here and pursue this? Uh, was it my own uh, emotions and passions and not got leading yeah. into that? Yeah. I mean, you question yourself, right? right? And uh, well, a lot of tears, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of like, well, what's going, what's going, yeah. is God done with us, <laughs> right? As, yeah. as ministers, yeah. you know? Yeah. There was this, because all those four years, the way it worked, we needed to literally just visit here a couple of months and then go back to Mexico and stay there and then come back and then go back. So like that. Yeah. And um, do the ministry a little bit here and a little bit here, but a lot of inconsistency, yeah. a lot of uncertainty, instability. Yeah. And uh, there was one time we were in Mexico and we thought like, that's it, it's over. It's over for us, you know? And I, I remember saying, it's, a, it's okay. I mean, if this ministry is not my life anymore, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's fine. I'll, I'll do something else, yeah. right? And I was just praying, I'll do whatever you want me to do, Lord. Yeah. Like you want me to go back into, I will have to start over in law because yeah. <laughs> you get obsolete yeah. if you're not into it. That's one of the yeah. those careers. I'm at every yeah. career. You have to be on it. Like yeah. and it's yeah. constantly, you know, like um, preparing yourself and yeah. all that. So okay, if I have to start over, I'll, I'll do it. And um, because it was kind of close the whole situation, and suddenly they call us from from here from the U.S. and say, "Hey, your your visa has been approved." Wow. And I was like, wow. So, yeah, it was, it's just incredible yeah. how God, God worked in our lives and stretching us, you know, teaching us something new. Yeah. Um, when you recapitulate those years, you say, they were not in vain. I mean, right. they, they, he stretches. us. Um, I'm a better parent. Yeah. I'm a better husband first. I'm a better parent now. Yeah. I'm a better minister, yeah. you know. And... Um, it's it's i wouldn't change it but i wouldn't say no probably if i knew yeah. <laughs> that things would get right in that yeah. bad direction yeah. probably i would have say no right yeah. like no i'll stay yeah. in mexico <laughs> but, so that so a long journey and then about the time you guys were making that transition the world shut down with covid and yes. yeah, i'm sure that made it much all the more difficult yeah. Um, and so now the goal is to plant a church in Spain. And, yeah, that's and so right. what um, kind of what is the goal to, as far as getting there and, and where are you going to start off? And yeah. Yeah. So what you want to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we are planning and forecasting according to I mean, we're in the process of reaching yeah. support. We believe and we are praying for next year at this yeah. time, 
we are ready with all the tramets uh, mm -hmm. with the yeah. Spain consulate and everything to be able to be there. Yeah. And um, of course, ministry in Mexico, ministry here, ministry in Spain is going to be very different. Yeah. Very, very different. We still don't know for sure yeah. how it's going to look like. Yeah. Of, I'm not going to do the same that I did in Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to share my culture. kitchen anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but, but we understand that at least we want to start small yeah. and ask God for blessings. Yeah. We, we're planning probably on small groups, mm -hmm. small groups, small groups, mm -hmm. different days. Yeah. Once you have enough small groups, yeah. then you put them all together and you call them the big group yeah. or the church. Yeah. And uh, whenever we start church, we want to start big. Yeah. want to be a big impact yeah. in, in the city and and that's what we're dreaming yeah. for. Awesome. That's Praise what we're Lord. dreaming for. Yeah. Yeah. And we're praying. excited. Yeah. We're excited and very open to to understand how ministry can be done yeah. in, in, in Europe yeah. and Spain yeah. specifically. So yeah, it's I heard it's 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 difficult and all those things, but um I, I'm following we're following uh, God's direction for yeah. it and we're willing to say, okay, let's do it. Let's yeah. go. Let's let's have fun and let's cry and let's yeah. get frustrated yeah. and then let's get happy and all of that. Yeah. So that's a that's a vision. And right is there, there have you guys kind of settled on where a city that you're going yes. to? Yeah. So yes. So we will be in northern Spain. Huh. Um, the city is called Santander, okay. which if you look at the map, kind of the center is Madrid. So it's four hours north okay. and you get to the coast okay. uh, up there. And um, yeah, it's a beautiful city, about 180,000 people mm -hmm. with, you can search it, um, probably four to five um, churches as Christ mm -hmm. as the center of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I yeah. don't know if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, preaching the gospel right. as the only way, like yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And um so it's it's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible and that only that and of course there's there's a lot of buildings, Catholics buildings right. and all that. They're, em they're empty. So yeah. it, there's a lot of need yeah. and and we want we want to be used by the Lord and, and create a, uh, make an impact right yeah. there. Awesome. So yeah. We're excited about that. Awesome. Well, I um so so you guys got married in 05. 06. 06. 06. And, and planted the church in, that same in year. San Luis the same year. And then how, um, when did the, when did you plant the second church? It was and, six years into it. Okay. So it was like six, 2012. Approximately. And then. And it's funny because we had missions in our hearts. Yeah. But because we didn't see it happening. Jesus like, okay, I probably won't go to Argentina right now or Africa or this or that. Well, let's start something here yeah, i can do something here yeah, yeah and that's when i mean it was god moving his heart yeah. to let's do it again yeah and uh that's the reason why yeah. we, like if we cannot go anywhere else well yeah. we can do it here yeah yeah and we went for the second one awesome and then so and then how long after the second church was planted did you have the conversation about transitioning about, to, about four years okay. probably yeah awesome yeah so, and then you handed those off to leaders there, mm -hmm. and um, and I, I assume still yeah yeah yeah, God. yeah. It's, it's it's working, uh, and we don't go off that often anymore yeah. to San Luis. Yeah, all of our family it's in Monterey. Yeah, um, yeah. When we moved to San Luis, it was just I mean, awesome. us. Yeah. So yeah, but uh, yeah, it's a lot of learning, a lot of. Okay, why can we do the same? I love the, the the missionary said the other day here at church, like, oh, the secret sauce. Tell them about Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. the secret sauce. Yeah. yeah. So, for sure, we will find ways to to be effective, awesome. and 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 in Spain, we understand it's going to be different yeah. than than in Mexico, than here in the U.S. as well. Well, um, thank you guys for your obedience and faithfulness to God's calling for. Um, so specifically for a young couple who are early in their career, just starting off in their life, um, like you guys were both kind of on a career path, serving at church, yeah. loving the Lord, um, but 
when you felt God's call, even if it was a little bit reluctantly, you know, surrender. How would you encourage a young couple that maybe they sense God calling, but they but they think, how can we leave? We've already started a career. How could we walk away from this? What like what's just a, a few words of encouragement that you would give them? Well, in my case, of course, um, I would say it's not gonna get easier at the beginning. I think uh, one thing is to say yes, and another thing is to leave. So once you once you say yes, and once you're immersed, just stay faithful. Yeah, things won't get easier until you struggle enough, and God says, "This is me showing you again yeah. that you're in the right path." Yeah. And because we sometimes think, okay, if we say yes to the Lord, everything is going to be easier. Yeah. No, but we need to stay faithful because yeah. there is a point when you look back yeah. and say, yes, this is absolutely the path that God had yeah. for me. And um, just stay faithful. Yeah. Stay faithful. And when tough times comes, get surrounded with people that love the Lord and loves you and yeah. stay faithful. Stay faithful. Awesome. Yeah, I would say yeah, listen, if, if, if God is, you know, moving your heart for, for ministry in various ways, right? Yeah. Um, either missionary, pastor, yeah. or there are many other things yeah. that you can do. Um, just be sensitive and, and say yes. Yeah. Say yes. As she said, it won't be easy. Yeah, but God is more faithful mm-hmm. he, <laughs> than, than anything that we can do. And it is so great to be in in the moment and the presence and and in the place where God wants you to be. Yeah. There's there's nothing more satisfying yeah. and it and it's rewarding and it's fulfilling. Yeah. You know. So I wouldn't change it. Yeah. So yeah, it doesn't get easy, but it is it is incredible to say yes to the Lord. Awesome. It's incredible. Well, thank you guys for sharing and um Thank you guys for watching. And uh, if this is, uh, we're recording this on November 8th. What's today? The 9th. The 9th. It's oh, birthday. it's G's birthday, yeah, it's birthday. as well. <laughs> November 9th, um, 2023. And uh, I hope I hope somebody watches this in a few years and then they look you guys up and see that God is, oh, is moving awesome. incredibly. Yes. 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 Awesome. Right. Yes. yes. All right. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.